Hi, my name is Cami Kotler and I played Elizabeth on the Waltons and uh, we're going to be making a little video talking about The Foundling, which was the first episode of the Waltons TV series ever aired. The way a, a scene like this would be filmed, because this, this was filmed rather than shot with multiple cameras on tape, it was shot with actual film that would be filmed with all the different angles, shot at different times, and then the film sent up to an editor who would cut and glue it all together. The scenes were filmed out of sequence, primarily driven by the set, right? Because it takes time and money to move the crew from one location to another. So rather than filming the episode in the order that you were watching it, we would have filmed all the kitchen scenes on the same day. So I spent a lot of time in that kitchen. We all did. You can see right now from where the camera is, they've probably removed the wall where the uh, that kind of bay window that the ironing board would sit in, that wall has been pulled out. We haven't seen that wall yet. We might not in this scene, um, but they moved the camera over here and we would rehearse it and then they would film what they call a master. So they'd take one shot of the entire scene um, from one position and with all the actors in it. And that would be the, the master shot. And then they would shoot what they called coverage. So close-ups, um, two shots, three shots, depending on, on who has what lines, right? And who's most important. Um, and then you do the scene over and over again. So you might shoot four, five, six, ten takes of the master, and then you'd have to wait while they moved the camera and the lights and got ready to shoot a close-up. Which goes much like... Who does? Has she run away from home, Daddy? Maybe, or somebody left her on our doorstep. Is that what you found? Okay, the so there's the first, the first cut, right? We had that master shot, you could see everybody in the scene, and then I have my question about, is that where you found the rest of us? And it cuts back to a two shot of just David and me. Well, my hair is a mess. And now we have our third bit of coverage, which is Mary and Judy, or Mary Ellen and Aaron, um, on the other side of the table. And so every time you see a shot that has is from a different perspective that in, involves moving all the cameras and lights and sound equipment to the other side of the, of the room. Okay, so another real prime part about being a member of the Walton cast was uh, what, what we might call hubbub, right? So that whole scene is scripted, probably into the point where everybody stands up to leave. And then a lot of what's said is probably ad-libbed. It's possible one or two of those lines were in the script, but most of it was probably just things we said off the top of our heads as a bunch of disgruntled kids leaving the kitchen, right? Um, you can see that Ralph has picked up a newspaper. Uh, he took a lot of pride in his acting, being authentic, um, and that, that newspaper is an example of it, right? Uh, Daddy's sitting down, he's having his oatmeal, he's getting his breakfast, he's probably already worked this morning, right, is what Ralph's thinking. You'll notice that my hair is completely insane, but they would do our hair in the morning and then turn us loose. And I think it's possible that for some of the other girls, like Judy was old enough to like pay attention to her own hair and maybe Mary's mom would notice that her hair had gotten crazy and brush it. But my mom had a job, so she wasn't on set. And God bless her, knowing my mom, even if she had been on set, I'm not sure she would have fixed my hair. So my hair is just like, it really looks like I've, I've put it in something and just gone. <laughs> which doesn't make any sense because Elizabeth just woke up and is beginning her day. Um, and so you can tell by my braids that really this is being filmed in the late afternoon after I've had some time to play and my braids have fallen apart. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and listen to this incredibly sweet exchange between John and Elizabeth. Hiding behind one of your mama's smiles, honey. Off you go. Oh, the director told me to stop and look back. And so I did, but I didn't know why. And then off I go. So I didn't really understand what these lines meant. Um, Daddy, where did I really come from? Hiding behind one of your mama's smiles. 
I think I'd learned the birds and the bees when I was about four. So it didn't make any sense to me at all that Elizabeth's daddy would tell her that she was found hiding behind one of her mama's smiles. Like, how do you even do that? Like, at least if a stork brings you or you're in a cabbage patch, that's a location. But it wasn't unusual for there to be dialogue among the grown-ups that made no sense to me. Um, and I just kind of learned to smile and keep going. I did wonder what was wrong with Elizabeth that she didn't actually know where she came from. Now, poor Erica would have to do this over and over again, right? Voraciously eat that biscuit that had been sitting there for four hours. You might notice, too, that Ralph's suspenders are all stained. This was a big deal to him. He was really, really conscious of the idea that John Walton was a working man and that things would be stained and dirty and he'd be hungry and his hair would be tousled. Um, he really paid attention. So now we cut to Jefferson County, which is not a real county in Virginia. And in comes John Crawford. Uh, John Crawford was really fun to work with. He had a terrific sense of humor. Um, and he'd been around forever. John was in things like, um, oh, Roy Rogers. He'd been in the Lone Ranger. Um, he'd... he'd He'd basically been around for a long time working as a character actor. Um, I guess he might have been best known at that time for Poseidon Adventure. But he always did a lovely job. I'll make the arrangements. Figure up your place. About four? That'll be fine. Thank you very much. You notice when Ralph leans into the car window here, the gray at his temples, that was added by a makeup man using a little black makeup sponge that was all, um, had lots of holes in it. And when he got older, Ralph commented that he, he didn't, he didn't need them to gray his temples anymore, that they actually were graying independently. Pay attention to the shadows, right on Ralph's face, on Holly's face. Those are all choices made by the director of photography. But still, the light just catches Ralph's blue eyes, Please. or as he called them, his baby blues. Thanks for watching this part of uh, Cami Narrates the Foundling. Uh, if you want to know when the next part is uploaded, go ahead and click on the little bell, and that will make sure that YouTube notifies you when we've uploaded the next part. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to know more about the making of the Waltons and in the making of television in the 70s, uh, go ahead and follow me on Facebook where I answer fans' questions and post whatever I happen to remember.